was inspiring about it is because it had been, he'd been thinking about it for 30 years and um, kind of planning things that he wanted to do. You know, it could have very easily been a dictatorship where you show up on set and he's like, I've been thinking about this for, you know, 30 years. This is how the movie is going to be. But that it was almost the exact opposite. He certainly did shots that I know, or I've heard that he did shots that he had been, had been, he'd been thinking about for, for 30 years. But still, in working uh, with us on it, you got the sense that he, it was still just as fresh. Uh, in his mind, and he still kind of approached scenes with like an attitude of he didn't know what the answer would be, and that for me was a good lesson uh, that it's always kind of you hope to see in practice, but to, but to watch someone who's accomplished so much in his career or been thinking about these characters and knew, knew his material so well, still approach um, everything with this like youthful curiosity. I think of Grupa very much as Saint Peter, who's like. Uh, full of doubt and doesn't hide it at all um, and is very openly kind of complaining and tired and uh, which I love but when he gets tested he rises to the occasion where it might be the opposite for Andrew's character where he seems very he starts very committed to uh, they're both very committed but um, their faith is very much challenged in a way where they start putting themselves within this bigger picture, then they maybe they can't they can't see their role in it anymore, or, or how useless it is. Kichichiro in particular, I couldn't I loved watching him. I, even in between uh, takes, he is like a really great energy and uh, a great energy on set. There was something kind of, um, I mean, this may sound too kind of. Uh, uh, precious, but it, there there was something kind of uh, not wholly necessarily, but focused that was happening on set, and um, uh, and they certainly lent themselves to it. They were, seemed to be game for everything. It's great working with Martin Scorsese because I grew up watching his movies, and like uh, I think he's the tip of the pyramid as far as like. Uh, directors alive today. Um, so you kind of go in, you can't help but go in with like a preconceived idea of that, um, uh, of what it's going to be like. I, I don't know what that is now in retrospect ever after having worked with him, but there's just, there's so much fear and, you know, reverence and you can't help but be intimidated by it. But he's very good at, um, uh, you know, demystifying himself and making it about, you know, focusing on the details. And I, I, I think there's some weirdly paternal thing that happens, or maybe the actor-director relationship, where you always just kind of are, you know, actors are very, like very people-pleasing people, I think, and no more is that more obvious on a set, you know, with a director, you're like, oh my God, like me, tell me what to do, I'll, I'll just, I'll do it, whatever it is you say. And um, uh, he, he doesn't want that, he, he wants you to, uh, rebel against him and take ownership of, of your part. His movies are so good because they're very personal. He puts so much of himself into them and that's I think people are just naturally interested and attracted to people who have a point of view and a voice and a specific, uh, and, uh, sp specific way of viewing the world. And He's a great collaborator. He gets people together and wants to hear their opinions and is not the doesn't think that it ends um, with him. And some kind of, a, a person who approaches things that are new with curiosity as opposed to judgment, I think is a rare quality to have. It was great working with Andrew because we were starving uh, together and there was nobody else. One of my favorite moments was that we were on a, not, not just because we were starving together, he's a great actor. Uh, and he's my age, so I hate him. But we, I mean, one of my favorite moments was uh, we were on a boat, and um, they had us. They had the front of the boat tied to a big rope that they pushed out into the water, and we were shooting this scene where they're pulling us into and onto shore. And um, no, one, when you're losing weight, it's all about timing. You know, like you have to time when you like have coffee and when you have. Um, you know, a shake or, you know, so you're, um, 
have energy for certain things, especially trying to figure out the rhythm of a set. You know, when is a good time to eat? So I'll have energy for this this next thing. Anyway, so we're in the middle of this um, uh, boat, and we're not wearing a lot of clothes, uh, and we're like wrapped in some damp something. It's just me and him, and the entire crew, and the rest of the cast and the extras are are all kind of on the on the. Uh, on the shore, and they called the lunch break when they we had done this a couple times, and so it was just uh, we're like, oh no, that's fine. We don't want to we don't want to come in. We'll just stay out here in the boat. In retrospect, I uh, think of them as Garupe and Rodriguez as heroes, uh, but at the time, I, I wasn't thinking what they were doing was heroic. I guess necessarily, they just made a commitment, and they were uh, doing that. I don't think people who are heroic think of themselves as being heroic. They're uh, just standing up for what they believe in, but in retrospect or on the outside, if I heard of that person today, that uh, going to those great lengths to, to follow through with what you believe in for the sake of other people is, and is, a, is a heroic act.